Our first feature film for the semester is a relatively recent film that's called Rabbit Hole. I like to have a relatively recent movie the first week of the semester for Intro to Film class because I think it's easier for students to sort of ease into the idea of studying films by seeing one that is from fairly recent uh, years. As you can see, Rabbit Hole is from 2010, uh, came out in late 2010, and uh, many semesters, the film that I show the first week of class uh, is one that some people have already seen, and is oftentimes one that if they have not seen it, they at least have heard of it and are familiar with it. Uh, that may not be the case on either of those counts for this semester with Rabbit Hole, uh, because Rabbit Hole is a slightly more obscure movie, um, but it was uh, sort of a, a critical favorite in late 2010. The other two things you see listed here, uh, U.S. is the country of release. It's an American movie. Most of the films that we'll be watching in this class will be American movies, um, but not all of them. And so I want you to be conscious of the fact that America and the United States uh, Hollywood studio system is not the only movie uh, releasing system in the world, that there are many nations uh, that have active, vibrant uh, cinemas in which they make and release movies. The person's name that you see here is the director of the movie, in this case, a person named John Cameron Mitchell. Uh, as you hopefully have already gathered from going through the other materials for this first week of class, we are going to be paying close attention to the directors of the films that we are watching, and uh, we are going to be paying a lot of attention just to uh, the role of the film director in general when it comes to uh, studying movies and watching movies. In each of the briefings for uh, the feature films that we'll watch, I will tell you a little bit about the director of the movie. And in this case, John Cameron Mitchell uh, has two other films to his credit as a director. Um, Rabbit Hole is his, his third film as a movie director. Uh, his first film is one called Hedwig and the Angry Inch from 2001, uh, so about 10 years ago. And then uh, the second one that he directed is a movie called Short Bus from 06. These are probably not films that you've heard of unless you're pretty familiar uh, with independent cinema in the United States of the past decade or so. Um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch is a movie that... John Cameron Mitchell directed and also appeared in as the, the lead performer, uh, the, the star of the film, so to speak. Mitchell was an actor for a number of years before becoming a director, and directors who have been actors or have acting experience uh, have a little bit different emphasis sometimes than directors who do not have acting experience. Uh, acting, uh, directing the performances of the actors is something that all directors do. Uh, that is sort of one of the chief functions of the director, one of the chief areas in which the director um, makes the creative decisions is in helping to guide the actor's performances. But um, some, some directors, like Mitchell, who do have acting experience, take extra care uh, and give extra emphasis to really working on the acting performances of the lead actors. And I think that you'll see in Rabbit Hole uh, just how important and how central the two lead performances are um, by the two, uh, the two leading actors, who play a uh, husband and wife, a married couple. Nicole Kidman, I'm sure you're familiar with, she has been a major movie star now for nearly 20 years uh, and has been you know, the starring uh, figure or the star of many movies. Uh, she 
received an Academy Award nomination for her role in Rabbit Hole, uh, Best Actress nomination. And if you have happened to have heard of Rabbit Hole before, uh, it might be from that Academy Award nomination that Nicole Kidman received for her work in this film. Aaron Eckhart, who plays uh, her husband, uh, Kidman and Eckhart play a married couple in the movie. Uh, Eckhart is an actor that you might be familiar with as well. You may not know his name, uh, but you might recognize his face uh, in this picture here or when you see him in the movie. He is an actor who has been around for well over a decade as well, uh, appearing not so much as a star, sometimes as sort of a second male lead, as he does here, uh, and other times as sort of a supporting uh, actor in various roles. Diane Wiest, again, a, a performer that you may not necessarily know the name of, but you may know the face of. Wiest has been around for uh, a, few, a couple of decades, going back into the 1980s. Uh, starred uh, on the television program Law and Order for a few years, uh, and has been in numerous film roles over the years as well. She plays the mother of Nicole Kidman's character, Becca. And the newcomer to the cast, uh, or the, the, the newest face in the cast of Rabbit Hole, is Miles Teller, whose character Jason uh, is a teenage character, who ends up uh, having sort of a unique relationship or special connection to the married couple played by Kidman and Eckhart. Uh, his role in Rabbit Hole uh, was his first big role in a movie uh, since Rabbit Hole came out in the past uh, little more than a year. Teller also has appeared in the remake of the 1980s film Footloose uh, that came out just this past year. I will give you a little bit of context in these briefings as to the story of the film that you're about to watch. And in this case, uh, in Rabbit Hole, the story of the film deals with this married couple, Kidman, played by Kidman and Eckhart, uh, who are dealing with the ongoing aftermath of the accidental death of their son. Uh, the, the death of the actual death of the son has taken place prior to the beginning of the movie. Um, and so when the movie begins, uh, the two of them are already sort of trying to cope with uh, the loss of their son, you know, the, the devastation uh, that that accident and uh, their son's death has, has caused for them. And over the course of the movie then, uh, each of these characters, played by Kidman and Eckhart, have a little bit of a different path that they take in coping with the loss and uh, going through the grieving process over their son. Uh, and it is those sort of divergent paths that these two characters take that causes a lot of the drama and a lot of the conflict in the movie. Uh, there's some um, arguments and clashes that the husband and wife have, and... Uh, by the end of the movie, they sort of have reached a place where uh, they've accepted their son's death a little bit more and have come to a sort of peace, both with uh, the loss of him as well as with one another uh, in their marriage. The last thing that I'll always have in these briefings is what to watch for. What I think uh, or what I want you to watch for as you're watching the movie screenings. In this case, since this is our first week and our first feature film that we're screening, uh, these suggestions are going to be pretty general. Uh, we haven't yet begun to study particular concepts in terms of film techniques or narrative techniques in film. And so mainly I just want you, as you're watching Rabbit Hole, to begin paying attention to the way that the movie looks, the visuals of the movie in terms of the camera work, now, is the camera moving? Is it not moving? You know, is it long shots, medium shots, close-ups? Start paying attention to those sorts of things uh, and, and being uh, aware of the way that the images look in the movie. Editing together of shots, um, again, the close-ups, medium shots, long shots, paying attention to how those different 
types of images are edited together, paying attention to the types of spaces in which the narrative action occurs in the movie. Uh, in Rabbit Hole, uh, a good portion of the action takes place in one particular set of spaces, uh, and so you can watch for that and see what it is, what those spaces are. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we're going to begin our unit on film style by studying mise-en-scene, and one of the things that mise-en-scene is concerned with is the nature of the different kinds of spaces in which uh, the action in a film takes place. I would like you then, as you're just paying attention or beginning to uh, sort of learn how to pay attention to the way the movie looks, uh, take special note of one particular image that you see. Uh, one striking image, which could be a particular camera angle, a particular composition of an image, uh, you know, just something about one particular image that strikes you as being interesting uh, and that you can comment on in the discussion and the follow-up activities that you'll do after, the, after you're finished with the film screening. And then, finally, uh, both during... Uh, the screening while you are still watching the movie, and especially after you've finished watching it, I also would like you to think about the themes of the movie. Now, pr you're probably familiar with or have experience with thinking about uh, thematic, uh, uh, th thematic material or themes in literature, such as novels, short stories from English classes, uh, it's very much the same thing when we're watching movies. We can sort of pick out themes and identify themes that are being uh, explored by the filmmakers and by the, by the directors of movies. Uh, and themes, of course, are broad ideas or messages um, that are sort of, in some cases, could be called the moral of the story uh, to sort of simplify it, or, you know, just a broad ideas that are being treated. So as you're watching Rabbit Hole, try to, uh, think about what are the broad ideas or what might be the broad ideas that, uh, John Cameron Mitchell as a director and, uh, Kidman and Eckhart and the others as actors are exploring, uh, within the story that you're going to see in Rabbit Hole.